Hey guys, Nico Drifto here. Um, today we're going to be installing a Provent 200 by Direction Plus for the D40 Navara. 2.5 litre, 140 kilowatt. It is a Spain 2012. So let's find out what comes in the box. Alright, so first thing in the box is we've got a full pass list. So I'll go through that quickly uh, by myself. You guys don't need to know that, but yeah, there is a full parts list. We've got our Provent 200. Good bit of gear. All the hoses. And a, uh, a bracket. So that's specific to my vehicle. Um, and I'll show you where that um, attaches to. And we've got a bunch of stickers and whatnot. Uh, service stickers too, which is cool. More hose, some hose clamps, and then a whole bunch of uh, barbed fittings, hose clamps, uh, the drain, we've got zip ties, nuts and bolts. Yeah, all the fittings you need pretty much to yeah, get you to where you need to be. There's also a full installation guide which is handy I went through it it doesn't show everything uh, which is why a video would be much easier so I've just gone through um, my list and just checked everything off um, and yeah everything seems to be there so uh, we'll get going right, so this is my D40 Navara four cylinder 2.5 litre 140 kilowatt uh, so far the mods that I've done is uh, all the four front industries piping so hot and cold side and also the intake pipe I've got a K&N panel filter which I cleaned recently because it was quite cruddy um, and just a uh, an EGR delete as well the other day I pulled out my intercooler and I um, cleaned it out with some kerosene and I'll show you this it's the kerosene I used. It was fully blue. Kind of still looks blue in there, but it is actually very, very black. Yeah, it's a good idea to clean out your um, intercooler every now and then, just because of all the oil buildup, and that's exactly why I'm uh, putting in this Provent to uh, yeah, just prevent all the oil and sludge building up in my intercooler and the rest of the pipes, as they do get quite a lot of oil through. So. This is where the installation guide is telling us to mount it. Um, I've run into my first snag, which is I've got a relay here um, for my spotties. So I've just got to move that and then uh, we'll continue. Right, so I've moved that, um, that relay that was there. So I'm just going to mount it here now. So I'm just in the process of uh, mounting this bracket. So I'm just using the Roby Reacher and So, bracket is installed. So next thing, we've got to put our 12 mil hose, 12 mil hose onto the pro vent. Got that on. Now feeding our 12 mil hose down. There's a good spot between the chassis rail and the guard liner. There we go. Perfect. Right, so I was a little bit confused because the original rotation of this was going down this way and when you move that around it doesn't turn and there was no way to adjust it. So I thought um, on the back here if you just lift this middle bar up that'll let it move freely. The actual 
orientation it's meant to be this way so our bar is about there need to lock it in perfect So that'll be the perfect orientation and uh, I'll join up some hoses now. Pretty much you're going to take this hose off your um, intake pipe, mine's the silicon one but um, yeah or factory there's rubber. So I did um, rig up this bit which is just a straight connector, two of these clamps and a reducer to go onto the end of the pro vent. So I've just put this straight section, straight barb in. Uh, we're going to run it through here and that will attach straight to there. But I'm an idiot and I didn't put the clamps on first. So I'm going to put the clamps on first. Nice one Jim. Feed it through, slap that on, go there, move this one around to there as well. And that is held on here if you can see. So that will run down to the top of the provent, which I will do after. Alright, so I think um, direction plus has made a bit of a boo-boo here uh, so they say that there's a, a 65 mil hose um, which is this one and then a 550 mil hose which is this one going to the bottom port or oh, sorry the middle port on the pro vent so on the sheet uh, it says the hose where are we yeah, the hose 0.65 of a meter so they've given me uh, 650 mil of hose instead of 65 mil of hose so that's uh that's an interesting one um but yeah i've got hose cutters so i'll just cut the hose to 65 mil and happy days it just means i'll get a free bit of hose so i don't know if that's happened to anyone else let me know and uh let's get keep going so I've measured these two hoses. This one is 550mm and one 650mm. So I'm just going to mark out 65mm and I'm going to cut it with me hose cutters here. So my gimbal just died, but um, <laughs> yeah, these. These cutters are super cool, they're just like a ratchet cutter. And yeah, cuts through it like butter. Alright, so now that's done, just mocking up the last pipe. The 65mm goes into 90mm, sorry, 90 degree. Which is that. And the 550 goes in to 90 as well. Now we'll have this one at the other end, this straight, which will go in to this reducer. So before I get too excited, I should probably put some clamps on. Hot tip, if when you're going to put these reducers on, uh, put them on to the pro vent first. Um, it just makes it a lot easier putting these big spring clamps on. Um, Okey dokey. Right, so this is a 90 degree hose. Right, that goes there. This time, I put a hose clamp on. Right, so this one come under the hard pipe. The same the top one they're meant to go one on top of each other i'll cable tie these together once i get them into the pro vent right, i'm just going to mount 
the catch can now. Yeah, if I can get my fat fingers in there. Which should be interesting. Might actually have to use a long extension. End of the 13. And hopefully, I can stuff it up. Yep, perfect. Just gonna move this hose clamp around. It's in my way. You just, um, when you unscrew this off, you don't wanna cut your fingers, so I will move it back once I'm finished. Because this is how you take the filter out. All right, so that's all fixed in. The um, bracket that they supply you uh, has rib nuts or nut certs in it. Um, so the bolts just thread straight in and not a hassle. Uh, the ones that mount to the chassis, they have an eye lock on the back. Uh, so you just need to um, get like a, just a spanner or a, um, like a ratchet behind it um, to tighten it up. But yeah, other than that, it's a fairly simple installation. I'm just gonna connect up these hoses now and that's pretty much job done. So just put the extra spring clamp on there and we're just gonna go down the bottom there, straight in. Seems to be a bit too much hose. See the hose is kinked here. So I don't think it's meant to be that long. This top one here also feels too long as well. So I might actually shorten these hoses up. All right, so yeah, I'm just gonna cut this hose a bit shorter. All right, just shortened up that hose. Perfect. But the bottom one is now on and just need to put the top one on. Top hose is on. Clamp is on. So all we're going to do now is uh, shorten up the bottom hose, but I'll do it up the, the other end where the right angle is. Right, so I've just shortened up that hose. And um, yeah, it's good to go back in. Right, it's a new piece. I'll actually show you what the lengths of the pieces are that I ended up using out of what they gave me. Um, just so it could make things a lot easier for you when you go to do it. You don't have to mess about doing what I'm doing. Alright, so this is what it looks like. So originally, this one here was went straight down to the bottom here. Um, but all you're doing is, yeah, pretty much unplugging that putting your two hoses that go to the pro vent and um, yeah you're just putting that in, in line and it's a very simple job also if you're wondering you just simply twist the top of the uh, pro vent off and you just pull uh, just wiggle it out this filter and this one needs to be uh, changed I think it's every 20 to 40 thousand kilometers um, but it should be drained probably every uh, 5,000 kilometers. There, there is stuff online to say that you should reroute the system to the sump. Um, I'm not going to do that at the moment. I'm just gonna leave the drain hanging under the car. I will drain it a couple of times. And um, yeah, I'll just see what exactly is coming out of it. Cause if there's any uh, like water or anything, I don't want that going back into my sump. So obviously there's gonna be other issues as well. So yeah, that's the reason I'm just going with the drain at the moment. And I'll show you right now where I've drained it to. So again, they've given me a lot of extra hose for the drain. Um, so I'm just gonna cut it off where I need it. Sorry for how dirty my under of my car is, but uh, yeah, I do take it off road to use what it's uh, used for. So I found sort of the perfect spot 
There's nowhere where the suspension's going to hit it or the tyres. Yeah, so I'm just going to cut it here. Just about there. Perfect. Little drain they give you. It's just uh, you unscrew it and it just raises a little um, wire ring with like a banjo fitting in it in the center and it's yeah, got a bunch of holes and that's how it drains out. So again, I'll put my spring clamp on first. All right, so this is where I've decided to put my drain. Um, it is out of the way of the tire, even though it looks like the tire might hit um, from your perspective. Um, I'm, what I'm just gonna do, just cause I do take this off road um, and yeah, all this could get gunked up. I'll make sure it's closed, which it is. Um, and then I'm just gonna put a little bag over it. And then cable tie it. And that, as long as that stays on there, it should not get any crud in it. Yeah, just when I need to empty it next, I'll um, just cut off the cable tie and give it a drain. But that's, yeah, how easy it is. There is <laughs> quite a lot of hose I didn't end up using, so I'll go through that now um, on the bench. Okay, so I'm just going to go through what I didn't use. Um, so pretty much out of the 650ml, 650ml hose they gave me, I only needed to use 65 mil of it, so that's that one. Um, even a metre of drain hose, and I only use 450 mil. Uh, what else? Uh, from the 550 mil hose, I cut off 100 mil, and from the 400 mil hose, I cut off 75 mil. So um, there was also one spare. Um, yeah, hose clamp, and there was actually a spare spring clamp left over, which was from uh, I just used the original clamp that was on there um, for the hose going to the turbo intake. So, yeah, overall, super simple kit. The instructions don't tell you everything, but they are a very good indication. Alright, so I'm just going to go through the tools that I, I used for this uh, little project. as uh, really not much as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, about 11 tools. And some of them you don't even really need. I just used them because I had them and uh, it was a bit easier. But yeah, uh, just a Roby ratchet drive, side cutters, hose cutters for the hose, the pliers and I forgot what these are called, just for the spring clamps. Um, these were much easier than using these, but these did get into tighter spots, so you'll probably need both, but you can get away with just pliers. Stanley knife just to cut open all the bags. Just a bunch of 13s. Yeah, just the stubby 13, because getting down um, beside that airbox and behind the pro vent to tighten up the um, bolts was a bit, yeah, there's not a lot of space, and. Especially when you've got fat fingers, fat hands, all that. Um, yeah, it's just hard to get down there, so stubby's good for that. 10 mil um, was for the two bolts for the bracket that bolted to the chassis. 13 and the 12 ratchet, just to hold the um, nylock nut on the back um, of the bracket to the chassis, just so I could tighten it up with this bad boy. Yeah, just a light, really. Um, comes in handy, especially when it's not well lit like my garage. So I just wanted to make this video just for those people that were, you know, intrigued um, and interested in wanting to know what's involved in putting this kit into their Navara. Because um, as I said, I um, scoured YouTube for a video 
on the Spanish D40, um, yeah, 2.5 litre, 140 kilowatt, and I couldn't find anything. So, yes, yeah, so like the tyre and a couple others, the mounting point is different. It's like on a fuse box up the back. So, yeah, it's just wanted to show people, yeah, uh, what exactly is involved and what they're up against. And, yeah, if I wasn't doing the video as well, it would take me less than an hour to install. So, it's a good little mod and it's um, good protection for your engine. Um, this, along with the EGR delete, uh, or just the EGR plate, and um, you should have no issues with the carbiding up um, of the inlet which is something that I'll probably need to get to at some point to clean out and just so everything's fresh. Um, yeah, and like good to also clean out your intercooler with kerosene um, and just let it dry before you put it back in, uh, which is yeah something I also did. I cleaned out the piping as well while I was at it. Um, just, yeah, so that the car's, you know, fresh and ready to go. And that's about it. So, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, just... Yeah, leave us a comment or a like or whatever. I'm not getting paid for this anyway, so it's just a bit of fun. Um, if you're wanting, I've got another video on the D40 um, with about the intake pipes. I've got um, some videos of me drifting in Japan because, as you might have been able to tell, I am very into my Japanese stuff and this is my Turbo Gemini. Um, so there's also a couple of videos on that which. Yeah, I want to make more, so yeah, stick around and uh, subscribe if you want. And um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. If you guys like me and love stickers, you'll love this kit. I'm going to be putting one of these up on my wall. Probably just a little small one. Not bad. So I've also got this little one that says um, to drain the oil every 5,000 kilometers and replace the element every 40,000. Every 40,000 Ks isn't too bad. Thanks for watching. All right, I'm gonna get the correct tool. I'll be back.